Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host Agostino Zynga and this is episode number 563, that is 563 of the Agostino Zynga show, hope you find you well wherever you may be, muddling it up my words on the intro like the G that I am, but I hope you are well wherever you may be, hope you're good. I'm feeling pretty splendid, I've actually you know mistakenly took a couple of days off without realizing i think i needed a bit of a charge from hearing myself speak so often and i'm sure you obviously needed a break too so you're welcome for that you know impromptu break <laughs> if you're not aware of it already then that you should know already that i have registered the url for the podcast which is the i guess no com, which is up there on the screen so if you're not already a subscriber what are you waiting for um, make sure you log on there for all your needs regarding the show if you want to contact man there's a little contact button there to do the damn thing over there there's all the links to all my profiles and whatnot you know the usual come out for and of course there's a little link to youtube here on the end as well so make sure you jump on there if you are needing a place to go to find all the information regarding me and the show all in one handy spot at the agassinozingashow.com you can find all those details in the description below of course and if you're already watching you don't care you probably don't care what have i been up to these days not much to be honest working more working going out a bit working going out a bit going out a bit working going out a bit working um the first few months of the year are always a bit slow for me anyway in terms of social stuff and going out and whatnot i tend to kind of keep it quite easy and then it starts to ramp up towards the summer i think this last week has been the only exception as i've been going out a few times here and there because of my bicycle it's been an absolute game changer i have to be honest for the first time in a long time i've been able to have a bike again or i've got i bought a bike not been able to i just have been lazy to buy one i'm not sure if you guys are the same I'm actually turning around every two seconds because I've actually got the Jesse Smollett flipping um, sentencing on at the same time on my other laptop just to check what's going on. Um, I'm just glued to this. I just want it to be over. Similar to the Megan Thee Stallion and the Tory Lanez thing. I'm sure most of you guys are aware or are not aware or don't care. But either way, it was two of... I think they came back to back, if I'm not mistaken, cases during the height of lockdown that basically got way too much attention than they should have but again because we were all locked down with nothing to do they kind of captured our imagination and because you know true crime is i think might be one of the number one genres in podcasting right or in media overall like people love true crime stuff so it kind of gave people an excuse to put their little detective hats on and start to investigate and find out things that aren't probably uh, you know in the public domain and whatever you know what it means yeah people really gravitate to it myself included so I'm eager to see what the sentencing is going to be for him. But anyway, um, the bike's been a game changer. I can't deny that. Um, I have been I have been going into work once per week actually, um, here and there for a bit of training. So that's been pretty decent. Or some yeah training and some kind of you know um to kind of uh, do a bit of training for a role that I probably I'm not that familiar with, but to kind of you know help out the company and whatnot. And it's been pretty decent to be able to go into the city center, kind of, you know, east city center, I'd say, wherever Liverpool Street area is. Whoops, I named the location, but you know, you know what I mean. It's nice to be able to go on a bike once a week, do you know what I mean? Instead of jumping on a train, because I don't leave my house that often anyway, apart from going to the gym or going for a run. So to actually be out in the open on my bicycle, hanging around, whatnot, is quite nice. And it gives me the opportunity to, on a random day, if I go in during the week, you know, Wednesday or Thursday, I've also got the opportunity to go and flip in, um, what's that word called? To go to a gallery opening and whatnot those are always things i kind of enjoyed back in the day but i remember i used to enjoy them number one because i would live no number one because i'd work in that area so if you happen to work in you know like i said liverpool street area brick laney shortage area for the most part most of the kind of cool galleries that would have kind of private views where you'd have a little bit of red wine a beer or two you know smile haha look at some painting intently you would normally do those things after work and you'll normally be in those areas so if you already work there it's easy to get there but if you're not there anyway and you live away from that area it's very unlikely you're going to you know in your spare time you know leave where you're at imagine if you're working for Pink king's cross and then come down to east to go and see a gallery thing it just doesn't make any sense so um but then the other point i remember too because i've always lived in really kind of out there areas even when i was living at home I, it wasn't necessarily the most coolest area to live in the reason why I would always go out a lot 
or albinos areas was because of the bike that actually was a big part of my kind of um social thing to do to come to go on my bike or maybe sometimes if i was feeling a little bit cheeky i'd go on my skateboard and whatnot but those were kind of few and far between because you know i'd be legitimately you know skateboarding miles and miles and miles and if you know me you know i'm a big sweater so you can just imagine how much drip will be dripping from me you know both figuratively and uh metaphorically <laughs> but um yeah so that's been fun getting on a bike's been fun um being able to go clubbing with it's been fun it's still the best thing there's not nothing beats cycling home with a slight buzz on honestly slightly buzzed on a bike is the best it's the best it sobers you up really quickly because you know you're essentially on a bike with two wheels on roads in the dark you you have to have your wits about you you've got the you know the cold breeze slapping you against your face and by the time you get home you're a bit tired you know what i mean so it's perfect you can kind of to wind down especially if you've been under do you know what i mean if you need something to kind of get your tempo down and get your heart rate down so you're not throbbing um then that's basically the best option that i found in my opinion or just do what normal people do in it and just hang around outside and just talk for a bit but you know seeing as i'm billy no mates and i go to these things on my own i kind of need uh um <laughs> so yeah jumping on a bike is the best excuse anyway that's what i was thinking about just putting numbers anyway um cool and what else has been happening oh yeah and all the you know the stuff in ukraine and russia of course has been um at the front of everyone's mind myself included it's still gnarly to think of um again just through my own prison because it's my own show not because i'm a narcissist or selfish in that way shape or form even though i may have some slight tendencies to lean in that way it's still gnarly to me how only a few weeks ago or maybe a couple of months ago i was I, I i was kind of figuring out when to book my holidays because like i said the beginning of the year for me is always a bit slow always a bit quiet i tend to not really do much and then as we head up into april and that it tends to ramp up and whatnot in it especially with festivals and all that other stuff i want to do and i was legitimately thinking oh i want to mix up my regular sort of like you know techno tourist thing that i always do in the year and instead of going to berlin and exhausting that again why don't i pick a new place right and the new place i was going to pick was going to be kiev because i think alongside copenhagen um tbilisi in georgia and somewhere else i forgot where someone recommended or somewhere i found on reddit actually those are the kind of new places people were saying were the kind of new up and coming places to go and party and i remember specifically or the spe specifically somebody from a forum who i trust their opinion um said to me once no or somebody that i used to go out with actually back in the day who i trust his opinion told me like the number one and two places kind of joint you know first you'd say be um kind of over berlin in terms of the vibe well that kind of reminds you of how berlin used to be maybe pre-2015 is tbilisi and kiev they're the main places people kind of you know really talk about a lot and the other city too in ukraine called odessa i think or something like that so those are the two places i was thinking of going and of course at that time i started to follow this instagram account called um is it soul vibes i think i think it's soul vibes Let's see if i can go up in here i think it's soul vibes is it soul vibes yeah so there's a instagram account called underscore soul vibes underscore and if you're a fan of you know this kind of music that i like when i go out and like house techno type stuff and you like to hit that scene in ukraine then definitely check out um underscore soul vibes underscore um they do a great job of kind of documenting that entire scene um you get all the idea of what those clubs will kind of look like over there and i had a whole list planned out i did like a um, they've got this sick feature now on google maps actually where you can kind of um t i think it's it may be existed already but it's far more um it's far more intuitive now i think before what i used to do you used to make maps so you'd kind of save a map and then pin locations that you wanted to go to but now there's a feature where you can just like flag and say i want to go there like you can do a heart places you can basically change the label you can basically say a place i want to go blah blah blah, blah or a place i want to visit and because it's your G your google maps on my phone anyway or my account is linked to my gmail wherever i sign into my whenever i sign into my email it will make it sign into all the other you know google apps and whatnot so when you load up your maps all your tags are on there so when you're in a city it just all shows up you know, like a christmas tree i used it last time i went to berlin actually um that feature before but it was you know i tagged it all up the ukraine stuff i was going to do da, 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 and i was seriously considering you know putting in my holiday request so i can go and then basically in a space of maybe a couple of months suddenly the conversation starts to ramp up about Putin. Will he? Won't he? 
and then you know people are coming out and like i think i read an article on ra of people within the nightlife scene basically saying hey guys don't panic this isn't gonna happen he's just bluffing he's just bluffing like everyone did and it? it's not everyone's fault or you know i don't think anyone lied i just think everyone kind of legitimately thought he was bluffing and um yeah he didn't bluff <laughs> he didn't bluff unfortunately for everybody out there and, and it, again for me it's weird because i went to go to party so it, one moment it was like a legitimately good place to go next moment so imagine for the people that live there day, day to day who just were living everyday life not really paying attention to the news didn't really care thought it was just another another day you know in some you know um in some empty threats from putin's side or russia's side and just were going about their life and then out of the blue just completely switches on a, on his head and i think because of that that's why most of i think myself anyway included i've i've become a lot more um i was always like this anyway but especially with the news nowadays you know mostly involving culture it's always kind of like nonsense counterculture stuff i don't care i mean there are legitimately bigger things going on especially when you think about you know a country being having to deal with covid and then having to come right out of covid into flipping wars and stuff you know Ye yemen they're having issues there israel still having issues palestine people are still having issues like all over the world these places had to combat covid in some way shape or form and then right out of it they've come into a war it's like god damn man and then here we are worried about who tells you to work hard which d person hit who who slept with that like who cares man really who cares like try and live a good life be a good friend to people around you be a good family member i don't know um enjoy yourself and do the things that you make you happy that's it in it all this other stuff is just nonsense really is nonsense when you think about it like they're legitimate flipping you know kids in ukraine who are studying computer science who are now having to pull out or are now having to be trained in how to flip and fire an ak-47 I mean, the only time they've used the gun is when they're playing Call of Duty and now they're legitimately doing it so they can kind of, you know, um, stand up for their country and, you know, fight for the freedoms of others. Like, it's just mad. So with that in mind, you know, who cares about all the other superfluous stuff in it? Who cares? But, of course, this is a podcast and, you know, talking about superfluous stuff is always interesting. Um, I went out on a weekend, so I was trying to reiterate that or make a reminder for people who are not in the know i think most people are in the know because i've spoken about this place in glowing terms beforehand in previous occasions and i think a few people have actually hit me up and said hey because of your clips because of your podcast i've actually went and checked this place out and i really love it so it's good to see and again i don't do this for recognition if anything i want as little to do with the people behind this place as possible i just want to have it because I, I don't know not because i don't like the people but just because i want to just you know sometimes when you try and become the inside person it kind of ruins the fun of the thing that you're you're enjoying you know when you're trying to be too clicky and trying hey man i want to be a friend guess let's you know guess this stuff and you want to get in the green room i don't know i don't care about that stuff i just love the space and i think because i've been because i've because i've been so spoiled in my travels and because the uk is so um random in terms of the quality of the clubs in terms of the quality of the nights in terms of the temperament of the people that go out on any pacific weekend the things that are good you have to really hold them close to your chest like you really have to kind of take care of them and i think for me when it comes to fold which i'm speaking about um i want nothing to do with the people behind it i've met a couple of them and they're legitimately nice people everyone i met there is really, really nice like great to talk to you can clearly see they're passionate about this shit and they're not doing this for a check they clearly care which kind of you know you see in what they do in a club in terms of the programming and the space and whatnot but i'd rather keep it at arm's length and enjoy it for what it is because legitimately after last weekend when i went to this event here called synchronosis er errors um with special requests and jasmine Inf infinity and rebecca salvadori i saw special requests actually and only jasmine i didn't see rebecca salvadori so unfortunately um my bad but what a great night legitimately what a great night and another reminder as to why in my opinion fold is the best club in london hands down without a shadow of a doubt without a shadow of a doubt from everything from the entry uh, process to the bartenders to the system with the lockers to the space in terms of dancing to the people that are usually attracted to that kind of place to the outdoor sort of patio bit where you can smoke and buy a beer as well it's absolutely perfect legitimately perfect for me 
in terms of what I like and what I want to see. And um, for the most part, I think it might be the only venue in London, for me anyway, where I would legitimately go blind. Like, you know, some places you don't go blind. Like a, a good example, again, you know, my bad for like speaking ill of other venues. But a good uh, a good example is like XOY or maybe Corsica Studios to a certain extent going in those places blind is you know you're gonna you know you're gonna cause yourself an issue because the programming is all over the place you have no idea who's you know like, like nothing makes sense week to week sometimes in my opinion again maybe i'm in the wrong there but from the times i've been there i've not really liked it so but also if you go down pacific nights they can also be magical same thing with phonox and those kind of places but i think legitimately fold for me is one of the only places where i can go in blind every weekend and legitimately be happy with the event that i went to who i got to see the people i spoke to randomly in the queue the ambience of the crowd the easiness of which i could get drinks the toilets whatever everything is just perfect for me the only thing that's a slight slight kind of cause for concern is the sound because again i'm quite lucky in the fact that i was I went to the very, very, very first fold party when they opened. I don't know when that was, 2018 or something, right? And that obviously was the big launch of the space. It was meant to be this new 24-hour club and all this, you know, there's all these glitz and glams about it. And unfortunately, as per usual with London counselling and whatnot, um, you know, those kind of opening hours got pulled back somewhat. I think they only do them here and there, maybe once a month. I don't know what it is, but the idea of it being 24 hours is basically gone out the window because the idea kind of how they sold it to us was like, this is going to be our London equivalent to a Bergheim where it's going to be open from like Saturday to let's say late Sunday most times, but that hasn't happened unfortunately. But you know, they still do what they can in terms of having 24 hour parties. So still props to them in that regard. But overall, it has to be one of the best places or best spaces um to go and party in london in my opinion um especially for communicate um uh communication wise communication or commute wise for me um i'm like 30 minutes away from there on foot like walk door to door if i'm not mistaken the first party that they went they put on there which i went to i actually walked there actually just to see how it kind of would feel to like be in my end which i'm kind of from and to go to a nightclub that's plays that music because this is the that's the wildest thing about it also if you imagine i'm from the area right where fold is like i grew up there like my whole life specifically so i spent the majority of my life traveling or taking the number five bus to go out of that area to go and party and rave in trendy east london you know anywhere past Olga east is where i went basically so to now be however many years down the line have a space that's playing the kind of music that I was chasing in the trendy parts of East London or parts of South now being the area that I was actually from it's quite a mind fuck it really is um but yeah cycling there was quick instead of walking a cycle that day um took like what 15 minutes 20 minutes because I was wearing you know going out of boots so I was cycling quite slow whatnot pretty chill um there's a couple of gates and like pot and lamp posts in and around the area so you can basically lock your bike up it right in front of the club so it's quite safe in that regard not not that anyone's going to be looking at your bike all day long but in terms of you know having it in some ditch somewhere you know you're pretty safe in that regard so that's quite nice um the queuing process is pretty easy pretty calm um they do a good job in terms of limiting how long the queue looks because it kind of snakes around on the inside courtyard thing where that's a good idea whoever decided to do that because the last few times i did go they would have it be so when you went into the gates and you got searched that was like kind of the main bit to kind of get in but the main queue was outside so that it would snake around the building and towards the back of fold it's like dark and a bit sketchy looking so it's good to have people kind of you know feel like they're moving because it's snaked in that was easy the searching again minor it's annoying don't get me wrong but it's a minor london clubs don't complain about it. it is what it is ticket thing is easy to get scanned get ticket get stamped and then you head on upstairs up the stairs isn't it? which is always a iconic sort of like start or primer to the night because you know you're going to get started and then as soon as you walk in obviously you've got a table to get your padlock um and i think the deposit if i'm not mistaken is different if you're paying cash and card i don't know how much it is i think it's like 10 pound 15 pound i don't know how much it is but essentially you pay a deposit and you get a certain amount of money back i forgot how much it is exactly but the locker system i definitely advise it because 
as great as a place is, there's no real space to kind of really chuck your jacket behind stuff unless you want to chuck it behind some chairs. But I think if you've got a pretty decent jacket or you just want to be kind of carefree and enjoy your night, I would recommend, you know, taking out some money before you go and ensuring that you do buy yourself a locker because once you've got the locker, you can just leave your stuff in there and just kind of, you know, if you need to take something out or if you need to put something in, you can easily do it quick, quick time. And again, the space is just brilliant, isn't it? one fairly square room with a with some soundproofing on the roof the shutters on the side that kind of let some light through some of it's been tinted as well then you've got the djs playing at the front behind the massive barriers um it's just really cool like it really is one of my favorite places and the time i went there today or that time i went to that weekend they opened up the back of it because if i'm not mistaken it was part of an exhibition or something if i'm not mistaken let's read the actual thing what does it say here the first synchronous, sorry, synchronosis eras party um, that followed where comes a special request, um, also known as Paul Warford and Jasmine Infanti, as well as site specific artworks from the host of experimental artists. Okay, so there's an artist that was doing some work there as well. Um, but I don't want to read that, it's all art talk, but you get what I mean, right? Um, so they had the backspace, which is usually the sort of. Um, green roomy type area they had that open to everybody so that was pretty cool you could go to the toilets too back there that was awesome so there was like two sets of toilets open the one at the back and the one towards the front as you come in and you know ended up kind of shuffling my feet away most of the night and then ended up leaving because i'd work in the morning and getting on my bike and kind of heading back home but it was a good reminder as to why i legitimately think Ford is the best nightclub in london for me anyway personally and it might have something to do with the fact that they don't allow you to take pictures in there which is a little bit you know berkheim wannabe issue but it does work let's let's be honest like i know some people have got like ptsd from like being rejected in these places and when you see people doing it in london they can come across a bit try hardy and a bit pretentious but let's be real like i myself when i went to um inferno one time got told off because i was recording right and i was recording i think a video that i uploaded on my youtube and it was just like my own video i wasn't getting too crazy nah i think i was getting too crazy maybe aiming at people's faces so i might have done that which is obviously not the right thing to do and i'm you know somebody that's got experience of going out so i should know better than to do that so i did it i messed up i made an error imagine just regular folk how they must get giddy and stuff so i think it does make a a, a difference it really does it really does help to kind of I wouldn't say what does it do i wouldn't say center people but it just maybe just lets you kind of go in there knowing you're going to have a bit of a tear up because i know some people just take them off anyway because they're not the best stickers anyway and they make you put them on yourself um which is weird um when you go to berlin they don't do that they legitimately you know if you take out your phone especially when you go to berlin so any place most of the places you put your phone in a thing and they stick it on there for you um if i'm not mistaken bergen has a pretty aggressive sticker for the most part it never comes off i remember one time i having it on and it was like i was wearing skinny jeans you know taking your phone in and out of your pocket maybe to check the time or to get someone's number or to add someone on instagram and the stickers will still stick on and now from what i've seen recently from the reopening they have these really massive ones now that kind of cover the entire back and the front so you know they've probably done some research on the most sticky um pill resistant kind of stickers that exist out there and put them on there but let's be honest it does work and I think it works because if you're not mistaken, look, I'll quickly check it again. But if, if if I quickly checked over the Instagram of Fold and saw their tag pictures, for the most part, there's hardly any real ravey, ravey footage from inside the club. Of course, you see some pictures here and there, right? But in terms of what you see in other spaces, in terms of everyone's got a clip, a little crappy clip of someone playing, doesn't exist for the most part. You do see some of these ones here, which if I'm not mistaken, these are from the kind of dub nights they put on, right? Yeah josh shaka ingers in calm controlling yeah so they got these sort of like dub reggae types of events that they put on there quite regularly and um they do pretty well but that's about it you don't really see too many images of course there's one there there's a clip of the shade here somebody on their way there on the dlr this is quite a cool image actually there was a time when this was being crazy so again i'm from this end so I, I i used to ride this dlr all the time back in the day bunk it get chased by the flipping ticket attendants and whatnot to see someone that looks like this on this sort of train is kind of a testament to how multicultural london is and also the kind of way areas change really quickly like they stay the same forever and then they change really fast right you go to a shop one time it like you know it's like popping into a shop and seeing one kid wear supreme and then suddenly you're seeing a whole batch of kids in there who look like you as well it kind of proves okay cool this place is getting 
very gentrified very quickly but you know i welcome it because it allows us to have an actual legit nightclub you know what i mean like in 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 canning town or in stratford in the area which is crazy and now that walk has become like a thing you know down the hill to go to the space and stuff it's just pretty nuts it's pretty nuts i'm not going to lie um but yeah so you don't see that many pictures or videos of it inside and i think legitimately it's definitely helped curate a pretty unique atmosphere one that you don't get any other place in london for sure don't get me wrong i don't think it generally works in london for whatever reason i think as punters we're just a little bit too excited and we just love to get <laughs> fucked really for the most part and document that fuckness and kind of regret it in the morning so maybe it's just not going to work that way but i think overall it really does help to really kind of ground everyone and let people kind of know okay this is a different vibe than what you're used to going out wise and it kind of adds to the entire event and i legitimately think like i said before this may be the only place i would go to blind on a weekend so big up forward big up what they're doing in it they're absolutely doing god's work in that regard and i do recommend if you are over in london and you want a place to go out to go and, you know push your fist in the air up and down definitely recommend you go and check those guys out because for me what the best for me the best um we continue on with that one what's happening with the KFC? Is it my hand? I don't know. um so yeah let's continue on this one we'll quickly touch on this topic this is an interesting one so over over, is it over the weekend maybe it's a week ago i felt like maybe it's a week or maybe a week ago um octavian the rapper decided to jump on a very popular twitter space that's kind of popped up in or not that's become really popular over knockdown i would say called um harsh reality notice um hosted by this guy called az right he does these really interesting um twitter spaces where he basically rambles on and on about um non-league football players because if i'm not mistaken this kid's got a background in like um playing professional football he may or may not try to make it um he then realized that he wasn't going to make it and has a bit of a chip on his shoulder maybe a bit of resentment wherever it is but he seems to have a real axe grind in terms of non-league football players especially non-league football players who enjoy their jobs the kind of people who kind of post you know pre-match day pictures of them getting ready to go to the game you know cleaning their boots on the way there in the car whatever he just has a problem with those guys i guess acting professional i don't know what it is but he just you know he hosts these really interesting podcasts interesting topics and they sorry interesting twitter spaces interesting topics and they'd be attended by the in the thousands right which is quite a high number for twitter spaces which is special which is basically like a clubhouse and it'd be really kind of well attended um, you know, it gets a bit boring after a while. So he decided to kind of switch up, I guess, and get some controversial type figures in to kind of really get the, um, to kind of really get people noticing it, you know, and get it trending and whatnot, as he says, yeah. I'll make sure yeah, you, you hashtag harsh reality notice, yeah. But yeah, <laughs> he decided to kind of get trending again and decided to bring on Octavian, who most of you would be aware, especially if you're in the UK, that, um, you know, very prominent kind of rising artist here in the UK or in Europe or maybe parts of North America. No, I don't think North America. I think mostly a UK kind of European act, I would say. I'm not sure if that's right or wrong. I was a big fan of his from the moment I saw that first video of him in a car. I don't know what, which one that was called, where they're riding down the street, you know had a very unique sort of voice had this really interesting kind of accent going on um and I'm, I'm a big stickler for tone i think someone's tone and how they rap and how they sing put words together plays a huge part in how i listen to the music how i enjoy it this is why i could never get into big sean no matter how lyrically awesome he is it's just that voice is just just too jarring um he seemed to kind of tick all the boxes for me in that regard you know great look sounds amazing the video's always really well done but for whatever reason, it felt like I could see from afar, you know, being somebody that kind of, you know, I would say is um, familiar with this type of music that he was quickly burning out. Like he he got a lot of fame and a lot of success really quickly. And then it seemed like the more I kept seeing him out and about, you know, maybe through friends or maybe through pictures and whatnot, doing shoots, da, 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 the quality of the music started to dip as well. And it was a real concern because, you know, usually in that kind of um, scenario, if a person, especially a young male, is given that much money and given that much success and fame and whatnot, and they're able to kind of indulge in all their vices, it can, you know, usually it ends in a catastrophe. So um, it didn't end that way, luckily, but the music got really terrible. And then out of nowhere, um, I guess he was one of the unlucky casualties of the lockdown because during lockdown, he got involved in a bit of a spat with his missus or ex, I guess, um, this girl called Emo Baby, who basically alleged that he abused her at home 
and he, she recorded these really damning videos that made him look like a psycho because it looked like he was high off something, rambling about something here and da, 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 who knows. Um, she released pictures of her injuries, text messages that sounded pretty sick. But, you know, by all intents and purposes, when that evidence came out, we just we just all believed, hey, Dr. Evans a woman beater. How, you know, how dare he hurt this woman? She looks really sweet and innocent. She looks really nice and supportive and all this sort of stuff. That was a narrative that came out. And to be honest, too, my man didn't help himself. I remember straight after the incident, he was kind of went silent about it. Then he did some weird Instagram videos and lives and stories, tr basically acting quite laissez-faire, whatever, not a big deal about it. But he didn't do what I think most men should do in this scenario. Again, I'm not a celebrity. I'm not someone noteworthy. I'm sure it's different when you're that rich and that young with that much kind of, you know, responsibility on your shoulders whatnot but i've always been a big believer that as a dude you should always always be willing to kind of you know exhaust every single avenue you can exhaust to clear your name when it comes to touching up kids the r word and domestic violence like those should be three things that you should if you definitely didn't do it you should be fighting tooth and nail to prove your innocence and especially in my opinion, in the court of public opinion, because saying you're going to just keep quiet and, you know, you're going to let the courts decide is nonsense. Because if my opinion, I think that's a cop out because we all know people get away with shit all the time. People get released from, you know, sentences that they probably shouldn't get me released from so early. I just saw a story earlier on about this other rapper in the UK called Young Diz, who, if I'm not mistaken from, again, I'm only, I don't really familiar with his music, but I'm only familiar with seeing him, you know, being featured on stuff like A Poncho and, um, scarcity and stuff right i remember if i'm not mistaken he must have kidnapped some kid or something tortured him i don't know something crazy right who knows the reasons why but you know someone got taken somewhere against their will and they got subjected to some form of violence right <laughs> that's what i know for sure happened and this rapper you know was given a double digit sentence i think it was maybe plus 10 years right for that for that kind of crime which is pretty gnarly and then i saw a story the other day like oh he might be released in a year and a half and it's like what how does that make sense? Of course, most likely he would get released in a year and a half. That means you have to serve the remainder of his time on tag or, you know, whatever. I don't know, whatever. Something will happen in that regard. But this idea that, the reason I'm saying that is I'm saying this idea that if you get accused of, you know, the R word, touching up kids or domestic violence, you should just keep quiet and let the courts decide is nonsense because the courts prove again and again that sentencing doesn't mean jack, you know, just because you didn't get found guilty in the court of law doesn't mean you didn't do it and just because you you know get released you know shortly you know just quite soon after you're into your 13 year sentence doesn't mean also that you are innocent of the crime it's just that's not not the case at all so i think in that case when it comes to octavian in this he obviously did a bit of a faux pas in my opinion because he didn't come and defend himself vigorously enough um, especially considering that in all intents and purposes again not to be mean to the kid but he's a bit of a dummy like he's legitimately after hearing him speak and defend himself on the twitter spaces he legitimately is a bit dumb right um maybe you know maybe a bit slow in that regard which again not his fault but he is supremely talented at making music clearly he's got a good given talent to like make good tunes right good harmonies lyrics and stuff and you know just good eyes in my opinion especially if he kind of lays off all the other vices and whatnot i reckon he'll be decent he'll have a decent career but he didn't defend himself vigorously enough and i think that is what ended up costing him because from what i could gather again it was on twitter spaces it went on for like five hours there's actually a clip here i'm actually gonna play quickly just so you can get a hear of it what it kind of sounds like where is it oh is it not that one it's not that one is it this yeah this is the one this is a clip of the a segment of the five hour twitter space so you can kind of hear what he was basically saying he was basically on there defending himself in the court of public opinion he was basically in the town square equivalent right trying to basically fight for his freedom or fight for his life and this is a clip of it that or or or, or during this chat go and pull up the evidence that this girl put against me i've never run away from it go and bring up the evidence and then you're gonna see for yourself because of what i've said that raw if the evidence is bare clear and it's, it's, it's bare clear to cancel or to drop or to say this guy is an abuser, then it should be even clearer for the feds. It should be rest me today. Do you understand? Mm. So, so we are not, the, the public, you're not lawyers and you're not that. And, and my ex-girlfriend, she knows that about you lot.
So what she wanted to do to me, because I broke up with her, not she broke up with me and found the courage mm. to go out and, and, and say this. It wasn't like that. It was on the day of my album. She brought out a video of us two arguing. Yeah. In the video, she's like, she's like, this is what happens in the video now, yeah? She's like, she repeats to me, yeah? She's only started filming and she's obviously cut the video to a certain... Anyway. You know, you get the drift of what he's basically saying. He was on there defending himself. You know, I don't know where his actual def def lawyers were because that was clearly a bit of a bad decision and a bad move. But <clears throat> considering the severity of the ac accusations, considering also that he legitimately, I don't think, he legitimately can't do anything else apart from make music. He clearly doesn't have the acumen, in my opinion, to do anything else worthwhile. So he has to kind of fight for his life. And clearly he was trying to. But from what I could surmise, it sounded like they were in a very toxic relationship. There was a lot of stuff that went on behind closed doors that we will ever, never know about, which I'm fine with. I don't care for the most part. And I think, unfortunately, he was just too dumb to realize what was going on in front of his eyes in terms of the recording, in terms of the screaming and the documenting of injuries and whatnot. He was clearly getting played in some way, shape or form. Don't get me wrong. He played into it too. I'm sure by being aggressive and whatnot, but they were clearly having such a tough relationship that they were doing those kind of weird things that people do to each other in tough relationships, right? Where they kind of being a vindictive and want to see each other suffer. But in the end, they always come back together anyway. And for whatever reason, we've been put in the middle of it. And I think, it's unfair for the public to get involved because I think for the most part, especially when you think of who was getting on the space, I think there was a guy called Lippy and this other guy, um, Bully or Billy, B, something B, that were getting on there basically trying to like, you know, um, boy him on the space and flex and whatnot and kind of put pressure on him and whatnot. It, it was a bit lame, to be fair. And it kind of felt like they were playing to the crowd, right? They were trying to appease the women that were in there who were feeling triggered, who were feeling as if like he was on there kind of excusing his behavior and basically giving a license or a reason for abusers to feel empowered and blah, blah, blah. People don't believe black women, you know, the usual stuff, right? Which I can understand, but that was, you know, just because you want to say your piece doesn't mean that you can't, just because I want to say my piece doesn't mean you should, you're free to interpret it in some, in the most um, unappealing way ever. And that's a bit unfair, but I get it. I get the whole point. But I thought that was a bit lame from the dudes trying to get up there and flex on him in that regard because they were only picking on him because he's Octavian, right? They know what he looks like. They think, you know, he's any guy and whatnot. But if this was Skepta or somebody, they probably wouldn't have said the same thing, which made me think as well about the Skepta thing because, again, it's not his fault and he didn't do anything. But I don't think even to this day we've actually heard him comment at all. We've heard Jamie comment on it, you know, who's his brother, who has who's further detached from the situation, but we've not heard Kepsa once commentate on two of his ex-crew members being put in prison for some fairly heinous crimes, right? Especially the the one guy, what's his name? I forgot the one with the beard, right? That was accused of raping, you know, a certain amount of women and whatnot. Like, not one comment from him in that regard. Not one comment also from the, what would you call them? The UK influencer media type personalities, right? That talk about this sort of stuff. They all kind of kept quiet, maybe because of connections, maybe because of whatever, but no one really said anything. There was no real uproar. Um, there was maybe some, but not in the level of when it comes to Octavian. And I think, you know, again, maybe because of what he looks like, he looks like a neek. I don't really know. Who knows what the, what the vibe is? But I thought that double sound was a bit weird. Like if Lippy wants to get, you know, with no pun intended, Lippy with Octavian, he should do the same energy or keep the same energy when it comes to Skepta and that topic comes up. But again, it wouldn't because of whatever reason, sort of same thing, cool, whatever. Let's move on. On the case of the whole issue, generally, I, I, I walked away from it thinking to myself, I don't care about either of these people, generally, because I feel like a lot of us, especially if you're from ENDS, you have to be honest and say, we've all kind of encountered people like this couples like this doesn't matter if they're black or white they exist in every end right especially in back in school there'd be a couple that were just you know weirdly aggressive with each other toxic and, uh, before we even knew what the word toxic meant gaslighting all this sort of nonsense before we knew what those phrases meant we we lived around it we had people in our family that did it i know for myself i had you know certain aunties that would come to my house who would be like you know who went through some madness back home and whatnot mum be supporting them like we've all seen it we've all know what it is and unfortunately much like similar to like losing weight there's nothing someone can say to you to for you to like make the decision to change your you know your lifestyle and your eating habits you have to decide yourself internally nothing is gonna no amount of shame no amount of 
name calling or ostracization nothing is nothing's going to push you to make that change in your life unless you decide okay this is the day i change same thing comes with toxic relationships and abusive relationships for them for the most part you know there's always that thing about you know the abuser always running back to their partner like well you know the situation is it's sad it's annoying it's frustrating especially if it's a close friend or close family member but it is what it is like it happens all the time and i think for people to kind of get their nose put out of shape and get all kind of um what's that thing called get all kind of high and mighty and pointing and finger wagging at everything. it's a bit lame to be honest because we know it happens all the time more often than not and i also think in this case for me personally when it comes to the whole counter culture from that malarkey again i'm not a fan like i think he, he he allegedly might have committed one of the three deadly sins in terms of you know one being domestic violence you know one being touching kids and the other one being rape obviously when you do one of those things or accuse of one of those things it's going to be long for you but when it comes to me and it comes to counter culture I've always said I'm not a big believer in like the industry or the gatekeepers deciding hey you can't have a career you don't get a label or no you don't get you don't get the opportunity to put your stuff on Spotify and stuff like that I don't like that I don't like that kind of industry influence of like no playlist for you no this no that I think the fans should always decide if this market decides hey we're not going to mess with you no more because you beat up women then cool you're done you're dead go and put your application into Tesco's but this idea that everyone should collectively get together and not listen to his music because you think he might have done something is nuts in my opinion especially if you could put into consideration the counter evidence that's been provided by some anonymous instagram account which is most likely being run by Octavian, let's be for real um called um the truth about emo baby or something like that right I, i'm not sure if it's out it's up anymore but last time i checked there was accounts of people basically leaving anonymous some of them not anonymous accounts of the other the girl in the situation being a not so savory character which makes sense right she's never going to be the angel that she painted that to be because nothing's ever black and white there's always two sides of the story bloody blah 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 and it kind of painted the story or it kind of painted a picture that looked like they both were bad for each other right and they both met each other at the kind of best and worst possible time in their life again i'm not i'm no psychologist i'm not psychoanalyzing people but it just is what it is and clearly you know both were kind of in over their heads it is what it is true and i don't know like that's it basically like it just is what it is and i think for the most part it's kind of worked out for the both of them i guess in some extent she's got the opportunity to kind of break up with him publicly and kind of put some distance on that got a documentary and you know changed her world in terms of what she's basically standing for and what she wants to do in life from what it sounds like he said he's got a new girl now with a kid on the way it's kind of worked out for the betterment of both of them which is what made me really think about like why is he on this space in the first place because i thought to myself like if he legitimately still has fans that want to go to shows and you know buy his music and stuff that should be enough like i think pushing for the acceptance of the forgiveness from the public especially the court of public opinion especially the ones that exist on social media who always want to kind of you know um position themselves to be the morally just person in the room i think is a fool's errand in my opinion it doesn't make any sense like if you've got if your fans don't mind that you hit women allegedly then just play to your fans why do you care what people on the internet think um i guess the only reason he'd maybe can counter it and say oh because this narrative is denying me the ability to get a deal I think that's the consequence, of course, of being accused of what you've been accused of. This is why it's important when you get accused of stuff like that, that you come out of the blocks strong and fast, right? You don't let that lie. You don't let it go by a minute or a day. I know it's not, it's not a good example because, you know, he's a different caliber of artist, but look what happened to Justin Bieber that time when you got accused of touching a fan or something. Remember that time something happened to him, right? he came through with receipts and a half like geotag location this screenshot that dm this this follow he had a whole dossier full of evidence that basically proved that what that lady or whoever it was said what they said was completely false and you need that because that smudge that smoke on your name or that kind of rub is something that you cannot get off if you let it go too long and you know maybe because he's a bit of a he's a bit of a dumb dumb that octavian he didn't come across like the smartest guy in the room or the smartest guy in the world in that regard when he was speaking to twitter spaces or maybe because he just didn't know how to articulate himself because it was you know a very stressful situation but regardless he kind of did it to himself like it is what it is um take your career for what it is at the moment and just enjoy it for what it is at that instant but I thought the bully boy tactics by the other guys that came on the spaces was lame because, you know, again, they won't keep the same energy for other people who did similar things. I thought the host 
bring him on a space without actually having a reason why to bring him on the space was a bit dumb too it seemed like he just wanted to clow off of having Octavian there he was really kind of those instances where he was sucking up to him asking him about the tune that he did with Future which was absolutely terrible that tune they did with Future by the way was when I realized Octavian was definitely partying too much and not focusing on making good music because that tune was ridiculously terrible and this is coming from a big Future fan you know that was a you know he basically he basically uh what's that thing called flush money down the drain with that feature that needs to be said and then also the other thing that disappointing about the space he, they had mad dudes on there if you're gonna have a space that like they talk about such a sensitive topic you might want to get on some girls or some females on there who can maybe speak a bit more eloquently about the topic maybe share some of their experiences maybe you who knows you might find one that one might want to back you up but then it was interesting what happened for the most part that host had more smoke for women when they basically were pushing back on him or taking the piss. I remember this one girl kind of started taking a make, what she called him? She called him a beta male or something, right? In the recording. I mean, if you can find the recording, you'll see the section. And he just wouldn't let it go for like another hour or so. He was really heated off the back of that and kind of locked her off straight away, which again is a lame, but he does that all the time, this host anyway. Whenever someone presses him and kind of really gets at him, he always kind of locks them off and mutes them. So he's a little bit of a, he's a little, little bit of a weird dude in that regard. But, if anything, in the court of public opinion, it did more damage than good. It pro it painted Octavian to be a bit of a loser. Um, he came across really badly. He was double speaking on stuff. There was a section where he was like, oh, I didn't know selling drugs was bad. I was just doing it to survive. I was like, what? Like, the kind of guy that, I think he even said a few times on it, like, he's the kind of guy who legitimately thinks because if you ever found, if you ever found guilt, not guilty in a court of law, that means you definitely didn't do it. It's like, in his head, there's no such thing as like people getting away with crime. Just like the court of law is like the highest court of the, it's like the ultimate um, judiciary system, right? Like, if you are found not guilty there, that means you definitely didn't do it, which was a bizarre defense to put on yourself. And this idea that, oh, because only one person said it that that means i'm not an abuser was just insane to to say out like <laughs> but again i can't blame the kid because like i said he's not the sharpest tool in the box this is his only way to legitimately support himself and his family especially his growing family so it makes complete sense that you would kind of come out and say hey like i didn't do this i'm not the guy you think i am give me another chance so that he can maybe try and get back on the stages because there was a time when he was legit one of the biggest acts coming out of the scene and now you know look at central c in that time you know central c's blown up and whatnot like you know he's forgotten forgotten about pretty quickly even in terms of his music I, you know you'd be hard pressed to find a lot of people out there who are probably banging octavian music now who aren't his fans you know what i mean so for sure I, I get why he came out and defended himself so vigorously but for me it was a bad move and it came across really badly but i get it and ultimately to end this ultimately i do not care i really don't like they clearly were in a toxic relationship they clearly were terrible for each other they clearly manipulated each other in certain ways maybe they manipulate the audience and the media whatever to gain whatever they can from it and they'll probably continue to do so throughout the rest of their lives unless they decide to change but again i don't care because i don't know these people so i think that's the main point people have to take away from this especially given what's actually going on in the world to get in the middle of this and even now i'm feeling annoyed that i'm even speaking about it for that long it just feels like such a waste of time like a legitimate waste of time and um i'm never gonna get it back really i'm not gonna get it back i think i listened to like the last two and a half hours maybe i think um because i missed that lippy part i had to watch a clip of him going off on him and even that was like lame going on there like i'm not lip i'm not thing i'm not as but that was no to be fair it was lame but it was a really good insult i think he said something like i'm not as so he basically he, he insulted the host and he insulted Octavian at the same time by right? with the veiled threat. Like, I'm not as, I'll come around there and knock you out or something. It was like, wow. And that, what do you mean you're not as? What do you mean you're not as? That was fucking hilarious, man. But yeah, um, check it out if you want the five hour spaces with him on there. I don't recommend you do. Believe who you want, you know. And if you like his music, support his music. If you don't, don't. If you want to support or whatever, you know, it is what it is. Um, They'll both figure it out. They're both big people. They'll figure it out um next on the list we have this this was an interesting one for me because i've been a childhood long time dizzy rascal fan still am spoiler alert still am 
And this was interesting because I didn't really know anything about this because I, I guess I wasn't paying attention too tough. But DJ Rascal was accused by his ex fiance of domestic violence or assault, basically, right? And he got found guilty in court. And um, it was surprising to me because, you know, I just didn't know about the situation. And then it also kind of brought home to me the whole debate around you know separating the art from the artist and i've kind of spoken about this a lot on this podcast especially when it pertains to kanye because i think for the most part especially in america kanye is like the black version or the the first time they've had to encounter that sort of morrissey thing that white people have right morrissey was in, you know an important part of i think musical history in the uk for the most part especially when it comes to the smiths and it may be some of his solo career but as a person he seems to be a bit of a cunt right and you really have to sit there and really wrestle with yourself if you're a big Smith fan, whether or not you can support such a guy because he is a legitimate cunt, like legitimate, right? And I think we've had the same, they've had the same thing obviously with Kanye, right? He makes amazing music, but as a person, you know, you could you could do without it. And maybe the same thing goes with Dizzy Rascal, like he made a, again, for me, there's only one album that exists in his catalog, which is Boy in the Corner. I still feel cheated and slighted that he what he made that award, won the Mercury Prize Award, and then for whatever reason decided to go completely mainstream, which obviously made him, you know, boatloads of money and was able to sustain himself and whatnot over the years. But as a fan, I would have really wanted to have seen what the second album of a Boy in the Corner sounding type stuff would have sounded like. Because by the time he did get back into Grammy, it was too late. He was an old man hearing him kind of you know do boomer gram rap was a bit weird after the fact and for the most part always poppy stuff i completely hated it but that boy in the corner album was a legitimate magnus opus that was legitimately like the perfect and again that was a time when i thought back then too especially when you think about what was going on in the scene Graham was kind of like well, fighting with relevancy but it was fighting for a reason to exist like people didn't really give Graham the respect that they give UK rap or Afrobeats right they kind of treat it like a genre back then Graham wasn't a genre people just assumed which maybe it's accurately that MCs all they could do was freestyle all they could do was you know spit on a set or whatnot there was no real kind of artistry behind it obviously a lot of artists have come from it but for the most part they didn't really you know they didn't really build their career off the back of grime it was mostly from just making genreless music i don't know whatever or just being a genreless artist for the most part but i thought like at the time that boy in the corner came out that was the perfect kind of see you know see if does a perfect sort of portfolio you needed to show somebody hey do you want to what's this grime thing about i don't really know what's about is it good da, 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 da. just just hand them a yellow cd boy in the corner just hand them that and that was it that could easily give them a kind of a rough kind of guide as to what the sound was all about you know i loved everything about it i remember i bought the the nike bws that he's wearing on the cover i bought those when they came out no i didn't when they came out they came out before the actual album dropped if i'm not mistaken they might have come out twice actually in a two years period but i bought that i had the gloves I did, and like i flipping loved the album legitimately one of my favorite albums of all time and might have been the first album i actually purchased with my own money may have been may have been maybe that one or some kano mixtape so again big fan of the guy so to see him getting accused of assault made me think oh, how am i as a fan going to um you know um wrangle with the idea that one of my favorite artists in the world might be a bit of a terrible human being so this article courtesy of sky news is the following Dizzy Rascal's ex fiance has spoken out following a Graham artist's conviction of assaulting her, saying wealth and status cannot be used to silence women. Cassandra Jones, who has two children with the rapper, said she had been receiving support from specialist domestic abuse services following the attack. So, pretty grim. Um, real name Dylan Mills, Dizzy Rascal was found guilty on Monday of assaulting Miss Jones by pressing his forehead against hers and pushing her to the ground during a chaotic row at the residential property in Streatham, South London, in June 2021. And following the conviction, Mills face seven smashed the photographer's camera outside. Yeah, that's a perfect, perfect, perfect response or perfect way to kind of seal you being found guilty of, you know, abusing your missus. You go out and you smash the flipping poor photographer's SLR. Absolutely taking a piss in it. And of course, the video is even better because I've got it queued already, of course. Of Digital Rascal <laughs> walking out of court, clearly not happy with the result and decided to fling the guy's camera across the street, which was perfect. <laughs> camera drops on the floor, he picks it and he chucks it. And that's, 
And that's a check. If you can look at that quickly, that's a check from a guy that's definitely chucked things in the past. You know, you just see people chuck things like you see, you know, what's his face? 50 cent do the first pitch and whatnot. You see, they're not chucked things. That's a guy that's thrown a couple of stones, a couple of bricks. You know what I mean, maybe a cricket ball or two. Absolute mad guy, man. <laughs> I saw the time I was busting my head open. Oh, what a flipping legend! Walking off on his own as well. You gotta love, you gotta love uh, the UK artists, isn't it? It's not like a big kerfuffle like how it is in the US of like oh, Dylan, Dylan. You know, it's just him bopping out, <laughs> jumping in his car wherever, he, if he can remember where he parked it in that rage, in the midst of that rage, sorry, and chucking it. Luckily, he didn't attack the woman because that would have been bad for PR if he decided to do a U-turn and bust and just you know um, double leg that woman at the back there. That would have been horrible to see, but. Yeah, absolute madness. Says Miss Jones speaking of the incident said it brought her no joy, but it did help her look back on what um I experienced and have it recognized by the court as assault. She continued, Then and I were together for a long time and I loved him very much. He's the father of our two children. I hope I can now move on with my life. Miss Jones earned that others affected with domestic violence should contact domestic abuse support line. She said, I've been receiving support from specialist domestic abuse services last year and has helped me to process my experience and not move forward so clearly she doesn't sound like she's trying to you know some people guys especially those kind of men's right people be like oh she's trying to clout off of it it sounds like you know she kind of wants to be over and done with this as soon as possible just move on which is um counter what those guys points they make i said it continues none of this has been easy i understand why so many women drop out of criminal justice system this has been really traumatic for me but i'm lucky enough to have had support from the police my family and my friends and specialist organizations this verdict today shows that health sorry wealth and status cannot be used to silence women one in four women in england and wales will experience domestic abuse at some point in their lifetime i know alcohol for privacy to rebuild and reset i hope i can move on with my life so yeah absolutely crazy situation to be in and for me can i separate art and artists yeah i can am i still gonna be listening to boy in the corner yeah i will will i be listening to any future project he puts out yeah probably i will too it just is what it is i think i'm far too invested in dizzy rascal the artist not dylan mills the human being because i don't know the guy even though i've got like a quite a slight sort of um story connected with him at the time he was going through his thing with Crazy Titch, who is doing, I think he's doing prison at the moment, so free Crazy Titch, um, another legendary MC from Newham, like absolute legend. But back in the day, I remember when they were going through their thing, um, I must have bumped into Crazy Titch randomly at the Stratford Shopping Mall, I think. This is before the Westfield thing was built, the main shopping mall. And he was arguing um, quite aggressively with some female sales assistant at the Foot Locker in there because at the time if you if i'm not mistaken you know those gloves everyone wears right um those kind of bad man gloves with a nike swoosh i remember back in the day most of those gloves that they were wearing were golf gloves they weren't like nfl gloves i don't know why maybe because nfl gloves are hard to get at the time but they were mostly golf gloves and of course golf clubs they usually only get sold in sets of one like right hand or left hand so he was trying to buy the left and the right but i think at the time they only had one i don't know something like that. he was arguing about that and that was a big beef and i just remember being a kid seeing crazy titch who at the time i thought was an older maybe just a bit big and a bit more aggressive and you know and loud wide than i am and thinking wow man this guy is a, like a celebrity to me and he's like in a footlocker arguing about nike gloves that's when i remember kind of like not looking at him as like the superhero that i thought he was and just looking at him like a like you're just one of those psychos from ends in it like just everyone's got a psycho like that from ends the kind of guy that like fights the local fish and chip guy you know i mean just like nutty shit and it, just, it, it kind of soured his kind of image to me in that regard the kind of the veil of like so kind of bad man mc sort of like went away when you're seeing this guy kind of you know again arguing with a pretty if i'm not mistaken it was like a small asian girl that was the sales assistant at the Foot Locker and arguing because you couldn't get another golf club in there or something a really bizarre one um but again him also garbage human maybe in a sense you know maybe you consider what he's in prison for maybe a garbage human but in terms of the music i'm too far invested in their artistry and their persona as an artist to kind of back away now and it makes me wonder like what would be the thing that would make me ditch an artist like legitimately say no i'm not going to support them ever again and i can't think of something i really can't like an artist again 
like to say I, I'm done with you as a person and done with your art as well because I think people say a lot of stuff you know it's like people in America when you know the election was happening between um what's his face Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump everyone's like oh if Donald Trump gets to gets uh becomes the prime minister of this country or sorry, president of this country I'm moving to Canada I'm going away that's ridiculous da, da, da. you know of course you know he won he was elected president and none of those people moved so people are full of shit they are full of shit so I think people say a lot of stuff I'm not going to say I'm not going to do this because that person did A, B, and C. But then when it comes down to it, push comes to shove, you don't do anything because you're just human and you're full of shit. <laughs> and I, that's the difference with me because I know I am. I know I'm full of shit. I know I'm full of shit. And I try to, you know, rein it in and hold it in sometimes, clench the bum. But sometimes it just comes out and it's just, you know, this is what it is. And I think in this case, when it comes to Dizzy, I just again i'm too invested man like you know two plus decades of my life listening to this guy's music uh, i'm not gonna throw it away now just because you know he decided to uh do the old uh football headbutt on his missus back home because what she didn't put the chicken kiev in the flipping oven or something i, I don't know man i wasn't there <laughs> you know I me mean? that's my excuse i wasn't there so i'm still gonna be listening to boy in the corner unfortunately um uh, if you disagree let me know in the comments <laughs> actually if you disagree keep it yourself i don't want to know because i'm still gonna listen to it regardless <laughs> oh jesus anyway let's move on for that one so when you talk about some stuff to do with sneakers let's move on to this one yeah so i actually wanted to make this a topic but things have changed so quickly in the world of sneakers that i can't actually because they've actually it feels like finally listened to my concerns so i mentioned i think a few times on here that i feel like nike for the most part are extremely lazy um especially given their resources talent money factory manufacturing they should be making way more interesting shoes than they are at the moment but they don't right for the most part i think the last interesting shoe original shoe nike put out in my opinion has to be the fear of god um whatever shoes that he did what are they called uh nike fear or is it fear of god one okay it's so a fear of god one okay whatever this model shoe was i thought was incredibly fresh and a probably one of the freshest sort of like new shape collaborations that you do with people because i felt like it really sort of represented what the fear of god brand was in the sort of sportswear way without looking too crazy um i thought it was really well done from the last to the shape to the colorway that were put out like the marketing material around it i thought legitimately it was one of the better collaborations that they've done in a while and i think in my opinion it was maybe the last great sort of original shape they've ever put out since then because i feel like you know it feels like it's always a never-ending cycle of flipping retros when it comes to nike and the uh, reason why i'm talking about this is like fair enough if you're gonna make retros right fair enough make your retros keep bringing them back and back and again but if you're gonna do them do them correctly but they don't ever do them correctly they always make them halfway and then they give you this shoddy excuse of oh we've lost the last manufacturing is really difficult it costs a lot of money it's like bros you're a multi-billion dollar company you basically print money when you just sell air force ones alone you could basically you know sustain a small nation somewhere through the sales of air force ones alone right just a white pair not even a black pair just a white pair alone could sustain a whole entire country so this idea that they can't remake the last or whatever is just complete bs to me so they're addicted to the retros they don't make them to spec and then they sell them half hard like halfway done in the hope of selling them to sneakerheads and then they limit the availability of you be able to get them so you can't even buy the thing that they want you to buy only because it's only made for people like you don't care about you know and another air max or another color you're also going to care about that and they don't make it easy for you to purchase so it's just they take the piss i feel like in general with sneakerheads and i always said that i felt like adidas were always doing the best job when it comes to retros like when they do do a retro they actually tend to do like different versions they'll do like a gr version i'll get sold in like jd sports and whatnot and they'll also do a version that's going to be aimed specifically at sneakerheads and it's going to be made with the exact specifications of the og or vintage shoe that came out from before now it might be because they've got more people in the important positions who actually care about sneakers like actual sneakerheads and not just people who like fancy shoes or funky shoes i feel like that's a lot of you get that kind of energy from nike you get a lot of people who are like san fran 
you know, happy dappy, just, you know, happy with colors and shapes and whatnot, people, than actual sneaker fans. That's, I feel, that's what it feels like to me, but maybe I could be wrong. But this is a good example of why I think Adidas are doing a really good job of the retro. This is courtesy of Just For Kicks. Sorry, JustFreshKicks.com. It says Adidas Originals to release the Forum 84 High with pre distressed details. And if you're, you know, unless you've been living under a brick, you'll know that Adidas has been going pretty aggressive with the forums, um, the highs, the lows. They've done them in skates now, whatnot. They're really pushing the shape. And, you know, I don't blame them because it's a really decent sneaker. I've been considering actually getting a pair for a while. I really like them. Sansa strap with the strap. I think it's a really good shape um, and a really good model overall. But they decided to go a step further because, again, the actual standard pair that they put out in this similar sort of colorway without the distressing is still to spec to me it looks amazing it's got the flat outsole it's got the great shape the materials look great like it looks quite close to the vintage pair i think especially because when you kind of compare it to pictures like you can't really tell the difference on naked eye but they've even decided to go a step further than what they've got in the in the kind of standard release that did well and also put on top of this stress look but for whatever reason nike can't get one retro right no like Adidas is making the same shoe four times and doing it to different levels and appealing to different demographics and again Nike can't do it once right to one demographic it's like it doesn't it boggles the mind um so that's it the distress one is coming out uh, date TBC sometime this year the distressing looks pretty decent on it right in terms of what it looks like and if you're into that kind of look you're going to snap them up if you're not you're not in it right even the soul's been yellow they even it's, the lace has been stained a bit and the nylon tongue yeah that's pretty crazy the nylon foamy tongue so they went all the way through with it and they kind of delivered in a really big way i feel like well it looks like nike have finally listened because again i remember i mentioned it in another video that i feel like the retros in nike are terrible um a good example i used i think at the time was the nike mx1 a kind of classic shoe that always gets kind of you know put through the meat grinder during an air max day right um you know classic shoe that i felt like they could at least done one time to spec when it comes out the big window big bubble sort of air max one in terms of the shape and whatnot you know just looking at those vintage ones compared to that stock image you can tell which one looks the best right and i think it's these right for sure so i was wondering or thinking to myself like they keep retroing things and making them poorly. The sneak industry is now not what it used to be when I was a kid. It's actually a billion dollar industry now. Everyone and their mum knows about sneakers. There's 15 year old kids making millions of dollars off of buying them with shoes and reselling them. It's not a secret anymore. So number one, it feels like to me, shoes should be easier to get and I don't feel like they are. Or if they are going to make them harder to get still, they should be of better quality than they were beforehand because you know for sure people are going to buy them because there's more customers out there to buy these shoes. It's not like how it was before. You were only selling to maybe a million people every single year. No, you're selling to many, many millions of people now every single year. So you should be able to either make them more readily available or make them better quality than what they were previously or maybe to spec. And they don't do that. So I thought, hey, an easy win for them, Nike, is like, hey, why don't you make a retro that actually is a bit more similar to the actual OG in terms of shape, in terms of just trying out the same color shoes. Look at that. That's a big window one. So it's turning out the same color shoe in the same model, the same as before, and then trying to push out the sneakers again because I feel like it's unfair. So I feel like you're exploiting the customer base. And it feels like Nike have finally woken up because they decided to do it with the Jordan. Jordan 1 being the the first sort of shoe that they're going to put out. And again, I'm hoping it's not just I'm, I'm hoping it's not just stains. Because don't mistake yourself. This forum eighty four that I just showed you, it's not just the scare stains and the scuffs that make it look whatever. Sorry. It's not just the stains and the scuffs that make it look great. It's the fact that they're actually to spec to considering in terms of shape when you compare them to the OGs. And that's why I'm hoping nike or jordan brand does with this jordan one because if ever there was a model that they sort of like owe it to sneaker heads to give them to in this two spec model it's a jordan one jordan brand guys anywhere are like nintendo guys right they're they're flipping ride or die they're going to ride for that company regardless of what crap they make the poor materials the horrible releases the you know dog shit colorways they're gonna keep on pushing these guys even the newer models they make are terrible but the retros if they're gonna reward customers they should be rewarding on the jordan ones because they keep buying these things and they you know it's like once you got one jordan one you don't need any more than that but they still keep buying them so i feel like they owe it to those guys to at least give them 
one Jordan 1 that's done to spec that's got the right shape on them that looks more similar to what I've got here on the screen which is a an original Jordan 1 even the one I sold recently from the time that he first played blah 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 just give them one of these shoes come on those guys deserve at least one of these original Jordan 1s done in this shape you know but of course some of that distressing done in, and there's no there's no excuse why they can't do it because they definitely have a pair of okay this is just a regular pair of Jordan so um, they definitely have a pair of OG Jordan 1s uh in the locker or in the factory somewhere that they can kind of pull out and just kind of you know uh deconstruct or reverse engineer and i think i mentioned it before on a pod as well that i don't accept their excuses because that they tell you they can't do it but yeah we're meant to believe that these um people that make reps in china are able to take a shoe brand new and kind of reverse engineer it sort of like take it apart and basically remake it again and sell it in different side rooms to people i just don't believe that they can't do the same thing with jordan one it's just impossible so it'd be great to see them do this similar and kind of make it to spec hopefully it's kind of you know the distressing is not just the only thing and it's actually made with the correct shape in mind i would love to see that i'm um, really going forward but this is the article courtesy of sneaker news this is the following High off, uh, high on every sneakerhead's most wanted list is the return of the Jordan Chicago iteration of the Air Jordan 1. Rumors have been flying around that Jordan brand would revisit the colorway on a newer Air Jordan 1 85 silhouette, the brand's most exacting attempt at recreating the original AJ1 mold. While that has yet to be confirmed, we've recently learned of something just as enticing that would do the timeless classic justice. Sources close to Sneaker News have provided information that the Air Jordan 1 with the same Chicago colorway will be releasing in the late 2022 with vintage hits and a shape similar with the original high of the 85. Remember, what was the other high 85? I think that was the one that all those um, Don C's that used to wear and Ian Connor and stuff. And let's see if I can see here, Ian Connor, Jordan 1. Remember, it was that off-white one that everyone was buying for a while, that 85 Jordan that everyone loved. Um, where is this? Like the grey one that he wore back in the day. Do you remember that one I'm talking about? It was like a grey one, like a Zen. I don't know what. I don't, I'm not really familiar with colour when it comes to Jordan 1s. It might be like a Zen grey. Jordan 1, 85. Let's see if someone's got a pair here listed on there. No, I can't see it. I think he's wearing... Yeah, that's, that's an off-white dunks here. But if I can see it. Vintage Jordan one air jordan one um jordan one 85 white gray let's see if that comes up let's see if that comes up uh it's got it there yeah it's similar to this similar to this but it was like a og og one and it was crinkling and everyone was wearing it for a time there's a time everyone kept buying this shoe i mean it was a high as well was it a high let's see if it was a high I remember everyone had these they were crazy for a while but regardless anyway you know what i mean um if they're able to bring these back like this is another missed opportunity with these came out recently the georgetown um jordan ones but if they can bring them back to actually look to spec like the ogs i think they'll make yeah like this this is the one there we go that was the one so that i remember there was a time when this was one of the most popular shoes in the scene for every reason the um nike air jordan 5 85 neutral gray okay that's the one neutral gray 85s those are really popular so they can make them with this sort of shape right and it's not just it's not just a yellowing on the midsole one it's actually a shoe that's been deconstructed and made to exact measurements i'll be over the moon i really would be and it will be go a long way to kind of justifying all the unnecessary i think um loyalty that sneakerheads have with nike because i feel like over the years they don't service us well man just think of the amount of new shapes and silhouettes and textures and tones and whatnot we've been subjected to with yeezy like them or not but they're interesting shoes regardless of them whether it's the you know the yeezy this is it was about the yeezy moon boots well i don't know what the name of them is the one that came out recently the brown ones i wanted right those ones like you might not like what they look like and you might not think it where it's going to go well with what you wear day to day but there's no denying there's no one else out there making the shoe that looks like that do you know what I mean it's completely unique everything about it it, it asks you interesting questions it, i don't know barry's outfit is fucking garbage here but even this boot this 1950 whatever just interesting shapes i feel like nike don't do it they don't push it that far enough when it comes to sneakers it's just always the same bloody garbage again and again and again i'm just tired of it to be honest overall 
um, I feel like they kind of get too much grace given to them because again because of all the legendary shoes that they've made over the years that people have kind of you know attached their entire identities to who have formed a big part of their lives and I think overall they're pretty terrible in terms of their shoes and retro that in terms of the shoes they're making in general there's no really original thought being put there even this new news I said all this energy they're putting into you know reintroducing a reimagined what is this called you know, a, a a vintage chicago jordan one with vintage treatment that could be actually putting r and d an actual new model of a shoe and maybe competing with the easy because it feels like in terms of an innovation they've not been doing much and then you've got all these other luxury brands out there making some really cool shoes look at what matthew williams is doing at Givenchy, for instance like him or not he's posing interesting questions offering different alternatives fresh new takes and stuff and people are kind of gravitating towards that because there's only so many Air Max ones one man can have. There's only so many Jordan ones Chicago's one man can have too. Like, please be more interesting and make new stuff. Again, if you don't want to make new stuff, cool. At least then give us what we want. Don't give us a... What's a bad retro that I hate? Yeah, Nike Air Stab. That's a good one. Nike Air Stab. This is one of the horriblest retros ever made, in my opinion. Like, the shape-wise, terrible compared to the actual OG look at that thing look at that right you look at that and then you say the vintage you say oh actually there's nothing wrong with that one there look at how different and how better that shape looks compared to the vintage even that the foot patrol colorway which is a classic colorway back in 05 if that was actually applied to an actual you know uh perfectly made retro it would have been 10 times better of a shoe do you understand what i mean like that shoe there like come on man like just put that color away on that crazy like that's what that's what the vintage one looks like right the vintage air stab so so i don't know i don't really have much faith in nike when it comes to retros because they always fuck things up but if they're willing to kind of make a change now going forward with the jordans fair enough but i do feel like they're taking the piss out of sneakerheads myself included when it comes to these things but you know what do i know in that regard how long have i been rambling for i think it might have been a while now isn't it is it a while uh yeah one hour 20 i'm gonna leave it there for now so out on me rambling as per usual that's nice you like it you like it <laughs> if you've stayed here for this long then i do implore you if you do have a minute or you want to check what i'm up, up to and whatnot then check out my website it's called agassinozinga.com i do have a section there with some photography bits and pieces that i'll be uploading over the week i've got some you know many roles of film develop if you're following instagram you would have seen me posting some pictures here and there but i'm slowly but surely getting them up available on my site now at the moment um so you have to check them out in my photography section when you go to the com they'll be with the pictures of they're listed so far i've only got the paris set but there'll be far more going up there very soon i also have a store opening up soon there as well selling some prints and zines if you're that way interested as well so definitely check that out at agassinozinga.com do you find a description the, the link in the description to check out all that good stuff regarding me but apart from that thanks again for checking me out it's been a blast as per usual if it's your first time check out the show via youtube you know what to do like subscribe and all that good stuff if you're listening via the pod you know leave me a review if you can or whatever platform you're listening to apple spotify that would be greatly appreciated i've got the patreon episode coming at the end of the week i've missed a couple of weeks already so i'm feeling bad about that so definitely wait on that one for me if you can and um yeah if you listen to it with the audio you'll hear a song of the week and if you haven't listened to the audio what you're doing jump on the audio so you can hear the song but if you listen via youtube you're just gonna hear it stop right now peace